I just want to talk about some Colorado laws, you know, when it comes to what is the law, it's an amalgamation of a bunch of laws, so you got to, you know, start somewhere. So here are some Colorado laws. This is uh, for anybody, you know, who just are, is curious about the law of Colorado. Also, I, this is for the Castilla County Sheriff's Department. Uh, there's uh, laws on the books, and I don't think they understand that they're the law enforcers, and the whole point of them being in power is to institute justice. And uh, I, maybe they just, I, I'm just, you know, this is a, for your information, okay? Castilla County Sheriff's Department. The preface of Colorado's Constitution declares that the purpose for establishing a government in Colorado is to establish justice. Well, that's interesting. To establish justice. That's the whole point of the government. That's not just the point of the police and the judicial branch, but the executive and the legislative branch, too. So Colorado's Constitution says we're establishing government to establish justice, also to ensure tranquility. Oh, that's interesting. Ensure tranquility. So there's peace, right? And then justice. Yeah, justice and peace are kind of, you know, interlinked. Uh, if there's no justice, then people are just, you know, uh, anybody could do anything. So uh, Article 2, Section 1 is just what? You know, like the warlords in Ethiopia or some shit. So Article 2, Section 1 of Colorado's Constitution, that's where the Bill of Rights is. It's the Article 2. Um, so, Article 2, Section 1 says that the government of Colorado is instituted for the people, and it's instituted solely for the good of the whole. So, that's the whole point. You know, the government is to establish justice, ensure tranquility, and it's for the people, the whole of the people, the good of the whole of the people, not just one or two people, but, you know, justice for everybody. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. I mean, MLK, he got shot for saying a lot of obvious things, a lot of obvious things. Article 2, Section 2 protects all of Colorado's right to safety and security. So because I am a citizen of Colorado, therefore I have a right to safety, I have a right to security. You can't, you know, there can't be intimidation, there can't be, you know, uh, harassment, there can't be gunshots, you can't go around murdering people's dogs. So property is protected by Article 2, Section 25 plus the 5th and 14th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. Article 2, Section 3 protects my right to life, liberty, and property. So as a Colorado citizen, I got a right to safety. I got a right to security. Article 2, Section 2 actually says if I don't get safety and security, then I have a right to revolution. So Article 2, Section 2 kind of goes above and beyond just right to safety and security. Article 2, Section 3, so that's right to safety, right to security, right to life, right to liberty, right to property. Article 2, Section 6 says this, Costilla County Sheriff's Department, courts of justice shall be open to every person, a speedy remedy afforded for every injury to person, property, or character, and right and justice should be administered without sale, denial, or delay. Well, what, well, what do you make of that? What do you make of that? You know? And this is, you know, particularly for Noble Havens, and there is Soto, the DEA investigator, and, you know, the judge, Kimberly Brown or whatever, and the clerk. Article 2, Section 16A. Are you paying attention to me, Sheriff of Costilla County? Are you paying attention? Article 2, Section 16A became law in 1993, so you can't even say it's like brand new, they didn't know about it. Article 2, uh, Section 16A. Colorado's Constitution says that the victims in Colorado have a right to Colorado's courts. Section 16 of Colorado's Bill of Rights is titled Rights of Crime Victims, and it declares that any person who is a victim of a criminal act shall have the right to be heard when relevant, informed, and present at all critical stages of the criminal justice process. Not only does the crime victim themselves have a right to be heard or their designee or legal guardian, but if the crime victim is dead, then their next of kin estate can pursue the civil or criminal charges as well. Uh, isn't that incredible? So, you know, as an American, I've got a right to speak, I have a right to peacefully assemble, I have a right to, you know, just a whole, uh, whole bunch of rights. But as a Coloradan, I have extra rights, right? And these are some of the extra rights. A right to safety, a right to security, a right to re revolution, a right to life, a right to liberty, a right to property. Let's see, a right to uh, the courts of justice. Right? The whole point of government is to institute it for the good of the whole. The point of the courts of justice is to pursue justice, I would think, right? 
How come the judicial branch in uh, the 12th Judicial District doesn't believe in justice? It, the court of justice shall be open to every person, a speedy remedy afforded for every injury to person, property, or character. So I got a right to property. I have a right to the courts of justice if my property is destroyed. Uh, right and justice shall be administered without sale, denial, or delay. So, so what happens if the police, you know, look at a crime scene, they go up to a crime scene and they see, you know, a bunch of dead bodies or whatever, and then they just shrug their shoulders and they go home. They don't seem to think that, you know, that crime is crime. I, maybe they're, I, you know, they're given comfort. At the, the best thing that can be said about the Costilla County Sheriff's Department is they give comfort to the criminals that go around terrorizing people. They give comfort to the criminals. That's the best thing. Why would you not institute justice? If you're a good police officer, why wouldn't you want to take up the banner? Why wouldn't you want to, you know, go do... What was the point? Why did you become a police officer? To go get the bad guys. Here's a bad guy. Go get him. Ask some tough questions. What the hell? But there is no justice to be found in Castilla County. Now, here's a couple uh, laws. So you got the Constitution, then you also got the code, right? So the code defines what criminal mischief is. Uh, D D Soto, he, he didn't even know what criminal mischief was. So uh, defined in Colorado by CRS 18-4-501, a person commits criminal mischief when he or she knowingly damages the real or personal property of one or more persons, including property owned by the person jointly with another person or property owned by the person in which another person has pos possessory or proprietor proprietary interest in the course of a single criminal episode. CRS 18-4-501, uh, one in brackets. So if the value of the property damage is less than $1,000, then it's a misdemeanor. Uh, CRS 184501-4ABC. If it's over 1,000, then it's a felony. It's a felony. Why would Noble Havens and Danny Sanchez and the Costilla County and Soto and the judge and the DA investigator, why would they pretend that the felon who killed my dog isn't a felon? Why would they protect a felon? Why is it so important for the Costilla County Sheriff's Department to protect felons? They maliciously, intentionally kill my dog for no damn reason. I don't know what the reason. Can somebody tell me what the damn reason was? Because they don't know who I am? Because they wanted to meet me and this is how they come at me? This is how you introduce yourself? This is the first impression. Because you don't know me? Is that the only reason? Animal cruelty is committed whenever a person knowingly, recklessly, or with criminal negligence torments an animal. CRS 1892021A. It's only animal cruelty if the person had only recklessly or with criminal negligence tortures, needlessly mutilates, or needlessly kills an animal. CRS 1892021.5A. But... It's aggravated animal cruelty if the person who tortures, needlessly mutilates, or needlessly kills an animal does so knowingly. The bastards who killed my dog June 1st, just after 5 o'clock, 2020, they have continued their harassment. So I don't, it, sounds, it feels like they've you know, provided cover or they've endorsed it. There's no way in hell that if they put themselves in my shoes, they would accept any of the goddamn bullshit that's happening around here. They don't even patrol out here. They don't even... Southwest Costilla County doesn't have any police protection whatsoever. In fact, they're covering for the criminals. They don't care about the angels. They'll let the angels, you know, perish and die. It's aggravated animal cruelty if they do it knowingly. That bastard that killed my dog June 1st did it knowingly. He did it probably even premeditatedly. The bastard had broke a window in the neighbor's house, went to the neighbor's house and broke his car window two days prior. The bastards actually were committing a string of crimes. Arson, lighting houses on fire, dumping shit in the river. No telling if they're involved in drugs. There's been a lot of bad shit that's actually happened out 
It was southwest Castilla County by the Lobato Bridge. There's a big poacher thing. There's a lot of stuff. How, ma how much has, how much crime by the Lobato Bridge has the Castilla County Sheriff and the people of Castilla County tolerated? I don't see how civilization that is, you know, based upon crime is, that's not a civilization. I don't see how it can continue to stand. So, animal, uh, Colorado's animal cruelty law, you know, goes to the intent. If one intends to hurt the animal, it's aggravated animal cruelty. That bastard, for whatever reason, I give him a stink out, they just don't like me. I don't give a, you know, I haven't done nothing to nobody, so you just want to hate this. This is what the racist people would do. White supremacists, it didn't matter what a black person did. Just, you know, find something, anything to go hurt them. Black people were just Republicans. They were just prominent. They were just, you know, doing well for themselves. And that's why white supremacists would attack them. And it, there is no reason. They didn't have to have a reason. And the white supremacists, you know, back in the days of lynching. Why did George Floyd, you know, get killed? Why, why does anybody get hurt? Because people are just bastards and they like hurting people. They're sadistic, sick, psychopathic, criminal bastards. And it's also weird to me, so I, you know, the, when I first came out here, there's dogs, the neighbor's dogs like to, you know, get on the street and chase me every time I would go to my house, and every time I would leave my house, every time I would come back to my house. And I really, you know, uh, tortured myself thinking about how can I proceed, how can I proceed. I thought a lot about it, you know, the, this is bullshit. The person who's allowing the dogs to chase everybody knows that it's happening, and they're okay with it. And I'm just driving home. Every day I got to, you know, get chased by a pack of wild dogs on public streets. So I considered and I thought about, you know, what would be the best way to go forward with this, you know? The people that killed my dog, they swerved, and uh, Havens, Noble Havens, which there's nothing noble, and he doesn't provide any kind of haven whatsoever, he sides with the criminals. He sides with the people that came up here, drive around stupid, drove here, drove there, drove here. They, I guess you could just harass people all day long, right? That's not a crime. Do you think in Noble Havens would allow that to happen to him and his, you know, the, put yourself in my shoes. There's no way in hell that Danny Sanchez would allow, you know, these criminal bandits to come and murder his dog and shoot a bunch of guns around his property and they'll continually harass him. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So I have no idea why they would side with the criminals. Why would you side? How many criminals have they been siding with? They, you know, they have no reason to assume that I'm like some sort of pathological liar, which I am not. I very much love the truth and believe in the truth, so. Mark Twain once said that if you always tell the truth, you never have to remember what you said in the past. So, you know, I called the Castilla County Sheriff's Department after that happened. They came up here. It was Noble Havens. You know, he's the one that, he was argumentative. As soon as Noble Havens comes out here, you know what he's saying to me? He's sitting there saying that I don't live on the road that I live on. No, it's Delaware Trail. That's where I live on. That's what the, you know, county map says. That's what the sign says. But Google Maps, does, you know, they got it wrong. So he, you know, says that it's not. And I said the sign's right there. He didn't even look at the sign. I can't even convince Noble Havens that, that you know, that road right there is Delaware Trail. And that was the first thing he says, right? The first damn thing he says. He also talked about how he's part Cherokee. Well, the, uh, apparently he doesn't know that in Kentucky, the, the Cherokee, the ancient Cherokee, they used to bury the dogs with the, their owner. And so the Cherokee have a great respect for animals and have a great respect for dogs. Native Americans, right? They kill the buffalo, they use every piece of it. So, you know, that's, he needs, Noble Havens needs to get in touch with his Cherokee roots and you know you, we respect people's dogs around here it's not only is it a life it's a pro you know it's property so is it above a thousand bucks it's right at a thousand bucks so yeah you know pain and suffering what price can you put on pain and suffering it was the first dog I ever had you ever read you know where the red fern grows you ever read you know the call of the wild you ever read any you know dog just milo notice you ever seen any you ever give a damn about anything 
in your life. The point of manhood is to protect the weak and the vulnerable. Not to terrorize them. Donald Trump and the fascists and the KKK and the Nazis and the Confederate bastards got it all wrong. You just want to hate people just to be racist haters just for no apparent reason what's so damn ever? Martin Luther King, Frederick Douglass had it right. So, yeah, this is just uh, some Colorado laws. This is, doesn't go just for me. I have a right to safety, security, life, liberty, property, and the courts of justice and access to them and to the right to be heard when relevant and foreign and present in all the critical stages of the criminal justice process. So I have all these rights, just like every Colorado has all these rights. You're not allowed to go around destroying people's property. That's uh, criminal mischief. And then you can't go around hurting animals. The animal cruelty laws, there's a lot of animal cruelty laws actually in Colorado. They just go on and on. And to, you know, uh, I guess come back to the point, when I first came out of here and I hit dogs that was coming after me, I, I thought about it a whole bunch. I'm sitting there thinking, okay, well, what's right, what's wrong? It's bullshit that they're sending them out there, but I don't want to hurt no dogs. So if I felt that my life was in jeopardy, then I have a right to defend myself. So when I would drive home, I would just drive a consistent, you know, 30 miles an hour straight path and just hope that the, you know, the dangerous dogs wouldn't do anything. And, you know, and, and if something had happened, then I felt like, you know, I didn't want it to happen. I'm just trying to go home. And, you know, they run it. And then, you know, the, again, so I, my point about all this is, um, I also thought about, you know, do I have to get it on video camera? So if I went and ran over, you know, Jacqueline Mitchell, who that's the bandits, they use Jacqueline Mitchell's driveway, so I'm sure she knows who they are. Or maybe not, right, maybe not. Maybe they just drive in her driveway and, you know, she just is okay with anybody and everybody driving her driveway. But then why did she have the dogs, you know? And then also a neighbor had said that she likes to put nails out on the road. So Jacqueline Mitchell was one that, the asshole that was allowing the dogs. And so I'm sitting there thinking if I got it on videotape, right, if something, you know, tragic had happened, if I had run over one of her dogs, cops are going to say, you know, prove your case. Oh, you're not innocent until proven guilty. I guess you're guilty until proven innocent. And so I would have to get it on videotape. That's the only way I felt like, you know, if something had, you know, a horrible thing would have, you know, a tragedy would have happened then it would have had to been on video camera because then I would have had to have proved. And I got video, uh, you know, uh, several video of them chasing, you know, so I've got the evidence of the dogs that were actually running out of her driveway. But my point is, I thought about it. I, I was like, what's, I don't like this situation. How do I, you know, stop it? A terrorist, a criminal, a bad person just goes around hurting people. They don't, they don't have a conscience. They don't, you know, they don't worry about, you know, such tri trivialities. But if you've got a conscience, if you know, you know, if you have any notion of the difference between right and wrong, which the sheriff's department does not, they don't have a conscience, they don't know the difference between right and wrong, this is a major thing. This is a big thing, you know. The... So the, my point is I thought about it, and when they go to, let's see, who do we go with, this person and that person, you side with the criminal, you side with the bastard that hurt somebody, for what reason? Why would you immediately do that? They, they know the guy, and they're like, oh, well, you know, you know, O.J. Simpson was a nice guy. O.J. Simpson, you know, look at the interviews. It looked like he was, uh, you know, it looks like he's a cordial guy. It seems like if he was to talk to him, he'd be all right. And there was that one time when he stabbed the holy shit out of two people for no apparent reason. So, you know, uh, jealousy, I guess, you know, I guess there was a clear motive. There was a clear motive, and he had, you know, drops of blood all over the place. And this. So the O.J. Simpson, you know, so somebody was nice to you, that's the evidence that you need to uh, n know that he's not a criminal. Is it possible that somebody could be nice to you and then, you know, to your face and then turn around and be a criminal to other people? That's totally possible. So, you know, the, the, the Costilla County Police, not only do they need to research Colorado law, they need to research the Constitution and the code, but they need to, you know, understand the meaning of justice. They need to understand what's, you know, right and what's wrong. So the Costilla County Police, they need to ask harder questions. They, you know, went to what the person, they talked to the person and they refused to tell me who's doing it. And then uh, Noble, I just got off the phone with the DA investigator and he had said that Noble Havens didn't see any swerve marks. That's the opposite of what he told me. And ever since he came out here and he talked to me, I asked him if he knew the criminal who did it, and he seemed a little struck by that question. But, you know, maybe because hit dog...
was going to holler. Are you with the person? Do you know the person that did it? And I told, you know, I think it's that person. I told the truck, and he goes and interviews the person, who, so he knows who did it. But he won't tell me who it was. He didn't call me back that night. I had to call him, and he just, you know, brushed it off like it was nothing. To him, I, you know, maybe he doesn't remember it. Maybe he doesn't remember any of it because, you know, to him it wasn't shit, right? Somebody murdered somebody else's dog. To him, he don't give a damn. He don't give a goddamn about, you know, dogs and animals and the weak and the vulnerable. He didn't, I mean, if he's not protecting animals, is he protecting women and children? The point of manhood is to protect the weak and the vulnerable. That's the point of manhood. So to me, you know, I go to the person that, you know, I think that committed a crime. Why were you over there? What were you doing? Are you drunk right now? Because it, it seems to me that that's when this... These bastards act the way that they do. They get drunk and act a fool. Are you drunk right now? Is this what you've been doing? What else have you been doing? So, yeah, they need to uh, uh, know the difference, I guess, between... Yeah, they need to know the difference between right and wrong. And uh, they're supposed to believe the victims. I'm the one that called them, right? Why would I call the police? And then the police... I feel like, okay, I go over there and I, you know, um, run over the guy's dog that had killed my dog. They're going to get, you know, they're going to file charges on me, won't they? They'll fuck me over if I get justice, and if, even if it's the exact same thing that was done to me. Is justice not eye for an eye? I get no satisfaction. I didn't do nothing to nobody in this fucking low-life piece of shit intentionally came over here to murder my dog, and if my dog hadn't gone out there to protect me, what would that piece of shit have came up to my house and done? Would he have broke property, destroyed property like he did to Nick Valela's house? Is that what he would have done? Would he burn the house down? You know, like, they were friends. Kevin Zinn was friends with the house that he burnt down on Delaware Trail. They were buddies. The Daniel and whoever, they were, you know, squatters sitting in some other guy's house. But uh, what the hell happened there? What the hell happened there? They're going to be best friends with these squatters. He was over there, you know, hanging out with them, talking like they were, you know, best friends. And then he's going to go back over there and set that house on fire. Was that just? Is that right? Is that... And then the, the, all the crimes that had been happening, you know, before I got here, he tolerated them. He knew about all these damn criminals that had been out here. So, yeah, there's, a, there's some Colorado law. Peace.